Hello and welcome to our webinar today. My name is Dan Allen and I am the product marketing manager for Domino and Volt MX Go. And today we've got a great webinar on harnessing the power of HCL Domino through Volt Foundry APIs. And we're excited to have you join us today. We've got a nice crew and I'll let them introduce themselves in just a moment. Uh, I want to remind you that if you have questions, please go to your GoToWebinar control panel, click on the questions tab and put your questions in there. We may answer some questions as we go along because we've got a couple of people in the background and we'll have a Q&A at the end and try to get to some or all of the questions depending on how many that we get. But please use the questions tab, not the uh, chat tab. So use the questions tab and we'll get to that. So I'm going to hand it over to Matt and let him introduce himself or, or to Adam Gartenberg and let him introduce himself and let you guys get started. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everyone. It's Adam Gartenberg. I'm product manager for Volt MX Go. Uh, Matt's the star of the show today, but I just wanted to give a brief introduction. Uh, we go to the next slide. We've got um, just our usual disclaimer here that we will be sharing information about products that haven't shipped yet and, and code that hasn't shipped yet. And so the usual uh, disclaimer about that not being a commitment or a promise, but we're real excited about everything we're going to show. Um, and now the next slide, just to give a brief background here, Matt's going to talk through a lot today about ways you can take advantage of the capabilities of Volt MX and Volt MX Go to integrate them with your Domino deployment. Uh, but first, I want to back up a minute for those of you who are not familiar with Volt MX Go or who could use a brief refresher. So we created MX Go to complement existing solutions like Restyle and Nomad and to give you additional options for situations where they might not meet your needs. It's all about giving you the power of choice. And so what Volt MX Go allows Domino developers to do are things like extend and evolve your Domino user experience, pulling from widgets, web components, and other capabilities while staying connected to Domino. It'll let you create native front-end applications for mobile, tablets, kiosks, wearables, and the web for your Domino applications. Uh, and that lets you do things like take advantage of capabilities from those native devices, features like GPS or location services, camera integration, as well as surfacing new technologies in your apps like AR and VR, AI chatbots, and taking advantage of IoT devices, beacons, a lot of things that you'd have at your disposal to integrate in with your Domino applications. And that's really what you're going to hear a lot about today is that kind of integration. Uh, and what Volt MX Go offers is new opportunities to integrate your Domino applications with other backend systems you might have in your enterprise or web services, analytics but basically making it easier to integrate Domino with the business processes that run your business. So that's you know, one aspect of things that it can help you do in terms of extending and evolving Domino. It also helps you to maximize and future-proof your skill investment. And we know this is important for you. It's important for a lot of the IT leadership in, inside the company. You've invested a lot in your Domino skills. Um, and what Volt MX Go helps you do is make the most of that investment by allowing your Domino developers to code Volt MX applications using the at formula or other languages that they're familiar with. And at the same time, if your organization has JavaScript developers on board, they can use MX Go to add uh, to code against those Domino applications using JavaScript uh, because it includes Volt formula as a first class language. So those JavaScript developers can update or create new code for your Domino applications without really needing to replace the existing Domino code. And the third thing that Volt MX Go offers is savings, savings in time, money, and complexity. We know that modernizing a Domino app from scratch could run easily in excess of $250,000 with another low code provider. Um, and what you basically end up doing is taking all of your expertise and just turning it into requirements so someone else can build and rewrite the application. And all of that comes at a high cost of time, resources, and risk. And what Volt MX Go allows you to do is save significantly on everything involved in extending or updating that application. 
It automates the importing of the fields, forms, and views from your Domino applications. They come over and they're automatically connected to your Domino back end. And as I mentioned, you can, you can write, you can copy over code from your Domino, your app formulas, and so on, right into Volt MX. So there's no need for a full rewrite. And just giving you a little more detail on the next slide about what's included in Volt MX Go. Um, from a licensing and entitlement standpoint, it includes all of the capabilities um, that are in Volt MX, including the ability to create freestanding Volt MX applications. It includes all the capabilities and entitlements of your Domino CCB license. It has the unique connectors and tooling that we are really the only ones that can provide here at HCL because we own and are experts in both the Domino and the Volt MX side of the equation and then special pricing for our Domino customers to make it very uh, attractive, hopefully, for you to look at this as an option if you're looking to extend and evolve your applications beyond what you might be looking at already with uh, Nomad or Restyle or the other capabilities uh, that come with Domino. Um, so with that, uh, hopefully that give, get, catches you up on where we are with Volt MX Go and what its purpose is and, and what it can offer for you. And I will turn it over to Matt to take it from here. Oh, thank you, Adam. So for those of you who have not met me, uh, my name is Matt Muncy. I manage the, the Volta Mexico design import team, uh, as well as the, the level three support team. So if you're working with a product and you've had any issues or cases uh, that we can address, if they get to the development side of things, uh, there's a good chance I'll take a look at them or it might be passing through my hands. I've got over 20 years of experience in the industry and in development, um, so uh, so I come from a from a fairly rich background. Uh, my email address is here in case there's something that you may want to uh, chat with me uh, offline after the after the fact. You, you're more than welcome to reach out. So what we're going to talk about today um, is uh, really what is Voltimex Go. Uh, we'll touch back on that again. Um, what is Volt Script and what is the HCL Domino Adapter? Uh, we'll take a better look at what Volt Script is um, and, and how we actually integrate with Domino uh, using a couple of different services. Uh, really focus on the identity service and the object services in Foundry. We'll go through a little run through on, on how to integrate a Foundry application with a web application and kind of build that. Um, uh, briefly, as well as look at integrating Foundry and Domino with your existing applications. So what really is Voltimex Go? Well, Voltimex, to begin with, uh, is based on, on two pieces of software that we put out. One of them is Foundry and one of them is Iris. Um, Foundry really is the bread and butter here. Um, it's a, a server that sits in your network that allows for you to connect your end user applications to your back end resources. Uh, it, it does this um, through identity services, integrations, uh, different business rules, API management, security. Uh, we also have analytics and reporting to kind of see how your applications are, are working and, and being used uh, by your end users. Uh, we want to make sure we have security uh, here going back and forth to your back end applications. And We'll touch base on that a little bit more um, when we talk about the identity services there. The other piece of software is our, our IDE, and it is called Iris. And so this is a, a, a low-code as well as pro-code IDE. The, the major benefit of this is it allows you to work directly with, with Foundry, um, really easily uh, integrate with some of those back-end um, resources that have created in your Foundry server. Um, be able to, to drag and drop some things uh, so you can do uh, application development without ever even knowing any code. But if you want to get deeper into it, you can actually get into the code and do some pro code things on it as well there. So that's Volt MX. Now, when we added Go, we allowed for you to have communication to Domino and, and integrate with some of the other Domino capabilities. So we added a couple of things to, to both Foundry as well as Iris. In the Foundry server, we've got Volt Script, um, and, uh, and in the uh, we also have the HCL Domino Adapter for for proper data management and integrity. And in Iris IDE, 
we integrated Volt Formula in Design Import. I've run a couple other webinars that you can catch replays on for those, um, but we won't go into the Iris IDE all that much, uh, but basically work on, uh, on Foundry and what we're doing there uh, with Foundry. So let's take a closer look to begin with at, at what Volt Script is. So Volt Script uh, adds the ability to use a more or less legacy Lotus Script uh, in kind of a new way. So a phenomenal development team um, led by Paul Weathers, who's on the panel here today, can answer some of your questions if you have them in the chat, uh, created the, the, the Volt Script engine. And so what they did is they, they took basically the, 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 the engine that runs Lotus Script, pulled it out of Domino and Notes, and were able to package this into kind of a standalone um, application that, that runs and sits on Foundry. So this is external to the actual Foundry server that you're running. We, we fire off a separate process. So we don't really interfere with the processing time and power that's happening inside of Foundry. But we, we, we kind of take that Volt script and we, we hand it off to the uh, HCL Volt script engine to go ahead and run that, that Lotus script essentially, um, which we've dubbed Volt script. Um, outside of Foundry and outside of Domino to be able to use some of those things. So we added a couple uh, pieces of syntax and some other functionality, and we packaged that up, and we called it Volt Script. This is targeted to GA in the spring of 2025, but we are dropping another early access release uh, here at the end of September, which has got some, some pretty cool stuff. So make sure you check out to join the early access program. There's a URL here as well as a QR code to go ahead and scan um, to be able to grab uh, some of those binaries and, and kind of play with that in your environment uh, before the GA. You can download Bullet Scripts uh, from this particular URL um, as well as we've got some documentation to set up Bullet Script in your IDE. So the IDE that we have, have targeted is Visual Studio Code. Uh, a lot of you guys are familiar with this if you're developers. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty powerful um, IDE to use for, for multiple things. But we created and built a couple of extensions uh, that we added into, uh, into the, the Visual Studio code. So we've got a build manager as well as language support. Um, so we're able to highlight syntax and, and do a couple of things there as well as help you build an application which is packaged up as a zip file that you can deploy in Foundry and be able to use Volt Script over there. A couple of file extensions are, are uh, .vsc and .vsss. Uh, the .vscs are the .o and .dll files uh, compiled from C and C++ uh, with those notes uh, libraries. Um, and then the .vsss are the Volt Script uh, source files. So this being shown, um, let me kind of give you an example of what this looks like. So this is Foundry here, and uh, inside Foundry we can configure a new uh, integration service. Uh, so we'll give that a, a simple name here of Test VSS, and uh, and use Bolt Script. We're going to upload the packaged zip file that we built in Visual Studio Code, and save and. Uh, and, and add an operation. This is a very simple VSS, uh, literally a hello world. Um, so we'll go ahead and save and fetch the response of this operation. So this is taking the uh, the, the, the Volt script that was built there, um, sending it off to that Volt script engine, uh, firing it off and, and executing the, the Volt script that we had there and coming back to us with a hello world. So on top of that, we can do a little bit more and we can actually add a request parameter here. So if we call this uh, uh, other operation we'll define as hello me, we'll add a request parameter uh, of username and a simple test value there. And then if we go ahead and save and fetch that response, we're sending that request over um, over across the request uh, to the engine, and we're coming back with hello test user. So there's a both interaction that you can do 
um, with your requests and your responses going back and forth within the HCL Volt Script engine. Inside of the operations, uh, you can actually have a couple of things where we can integrate Volt Script directly with um, what you're doing with the requests and the responses. So there's more about pre and post processors in the documentation for uh, Voltmx, but basically a preprocessor is when the request comes in, we can do manipulations on it, we send it to the back end resource, and when that response comes back, we can execute a post processor, uh, do some manipulations on that before going to the end users. So you can see here that we have uh, created essentially an editor um, inside the pre and post processors. Um, that has uh, syntax highlighting for you to be able to, to use and execute bold script directly there. The benefit and beauty of this is your developers that are currently familiar with Lotus Script don't need to learn another language. They can kind of come right in here and, and use um, the, the language that they're familiar with to be able to get their hands uh, in, in uh, their hands dirty, <laughs> I guess you would say, with Foundry uh, and be able to jump in and use it. So not only the things that we do on one side, but we can also talk directly to Domino. So let's add another service here um, and, uh, and add a, uh, a, a, another um, simple test here where we actually talk use the, through the Domino REST API or Drapi uh, via VoltScript to actually do some updates and look at data coming back from Domino. We want to go ahead and make sure that we have an identity service um, that is based on an OAuth um, authorizations. So OAuth 2 will be set up here to make sure that we have a secure communication with Domino. Uh, we always want to make sure that we maintain Domino uh, integrity and security. And so that's all done with, with OAuth uh, going back and forth to the, the Domino server via the Domino REST API. So once that service has been set up and logged in there, we're going to go ahead and again add an operation. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and, and, and use called get and mask VSS. What we're going to do here is reach out to Domino, grab some values from our document, and mask those document those those values. Um, so we'll pop in here the the server URL of our Domino server, and we want to go ahead and look at uh, masking um, the, the date of birth. So these values may be present in your Domino environment, but coming back, you may want to mask things when they're going to a web application. So we're going to go ahead and log in with our Domino credentials to Domino. And when that's being done, uh, we're sending that across securely uh, for this particular user. We're going out and we're we're grabbing those documents from our Domino server, looking for the date of birth and masking that as we've defined our, our VSS code. So looking here, we see that we actually have date of birth, but we're getting back the, the masked value. So we can also update things and, uh, and go back and forth, not only reading data from Domino, but also making changes to Domino um, using VoltScript directly, uh, directly through. So we'll add a couple more parameters here to go across on the request. Uh, we'll need the server URL of that Domino server. Um, we'll go ahead and look at a company's name and uh, this particular company of Rutherford, we want to grab the UNID of that and that's what we're going to uh, get in change here. So we'll pop in there the UNID of that and uh, we'll add the parameter for the company name. And we're going to change Rutherford to uh, Rutherford Mayor. So when we go ahead and save and fetch that response, again, we're querying Domino. We're looking for those particular um, attributes of that company with that particular uh, UNID of that documents. We're going to go back into Domino, update that in our Domino server, and then be able to see the results there. So once this operation has been executed, we can look at the company here, refresh it, and now see that that is Rutherford Mail. Uh, we look at the contacts and it's been populated uh, throughout our Domino server. So we're using VoltScript um, inside of our Foundry servers to go through and actually make executions against our Domino server. So pretty powerful stuff. 
um, make sure that you sign up for the early access to, to be able to get your uh, yourself to, to play with this and take a look at it. Again, a great drop's coming at the end of September, and this will be GA'd in, uh, in uh, the, the spring of next year. So with that, let's move on to what the HCL Domino adapter is. So uh, this is used to communicate with Domino um, basically for data integrity. So we have a couple of services here, the identity service, again, using OAuth to make sure we have uh, integrity with your um, secured uh, access to Domino. Uh, we make sure that we uh, maintain access control levels for roles um, that you have in your Domino server for both users and groups. All of that Domino security is maintained. And anything that we use as an OAuth implementation, uh, you're, you're able to use. I just recently, set up a Microsoft Azure server, which uses OAuth to be able to do the same kind of communication. So you can use different IDPs as long as they have an OAuth uh, implementation. We can use integration services to communicate with REST calls directly through the Domino REST API or, or Drabi. Uh, so JSON service definitions uh, can be done to, to make those different requests and responses to communicate with, with Domino. I call them domino actions uh, to kind of do things to move data around or, or manipulate documents. You're able to do that. But if you're gonna talk about domino data, you definitely wanna use the HCL domino adapter. Again, this is kind of the key link between the end user and our domino data. Um, we do this all via and the domino REST API um, to make sure that we are able to have uh, your data maintained with integrity. So looking at a pictorial representation of this, you have the end user application. Uh, you go through your internet or, or LAN to Foundry. Uh, we go through our identity manager to make sure we do have secure access to the data. Um, there's integration services, API management. Um, one of the benefits of using the HCL Domino adapter is we do uh, allow for you to have the ability to uh, maintain and play with offline objects. Um, so those offline objects allow for you to be able to manipulate and, and use your application, even if you don't have connectivity necessarily to the server. So especially with mobile applications, tablets, wearables, all of these things are able to be used um, within uh, Voltmx and Voltmx Go. Um, if you have limited connectivity, you're going into an elevator, you're in rural area, um, you're still able to use the applications, maintain your business, and then when connectivity is restored, you can synchronize that with your backend server. Um, this specifically being Domino with MXGo, uh, we communicate through the REST APIs to Domino. So if we're looking at what an application looks like in notes in the top left here, um, we can create a web application and see that um, the same data being represented uh, in the bottom right. So how exactly is it that we do that? Well, let's walk through um, how we set this up in Foundry. So um, when you log into Foundry, you will create a new application and, and begin there. Once the application has been created, uh, you'll define your identity service. So we again have an OAuth 2. Um, we've got the, uh, the authorized endpoints, uh, which is your Domino REST API server. Um, same thing with, a, with an endpoint token. Uh, we'll define the scope that we've defined inside of the Domino REST API, along with a client ID and secret to make sure that we have, again, secure communication to Domino. You can find this information um, in your Domino REST API uh, admin consoles uh, for the client IDs and secrets for your particular apps that you would build there. Once you have that information for the identity service, you would create an object service. Uh, this would be of HCL Domino type, and you want to make sure that you reference your authentication and your existing identity provider uh, that we've built there. Once you build that, you can actually go ahead and generate your data models. Um, and so the data models there that we've pulled back from our address book that we're building, uh, again, this is not the notes address book, this is just an application that I call it address book. Um, and we can pull in the forms and the views that we have defined in this simple application. You can update the data models that you are building inside of Foundry. 
um, we take the name of the form and the name of the views and populate them in there for you. Uh, but you can update that if you wish to do that in your uh, object models that you're creating inside of Foundry. So once we pull that back in, um, we see the data model that we have created. So uh, you can configure that here as well as look at the mappings. And so one of the really neat things that you can do inside of Foundry is once you've built this object service, you can go ahead and you can test the application uh, to make sure that you have proper communication uh, through your, your secure access to Domino uh, to get some data back. So if we run that test, we pull back a JSON response that we get from Domino that shows the same information here uh, that we see in our application um, responding back with that JSON uh, data that we see there returned. Again, not only can we view data, but we can create or post and update data. So if we were to post data, uh, we can go ahead and, uh, and, and create that and upload that and create documents directly right inside of Domino. So all this being done through your web apps um, and through Foundry uh, to be able to talk to Domino and update and manipulate that data securely and efficiently. So let's take a quick look at, at, at how we're doing this. So I've been through the panels, but let me show you it kind of live here. Um, so inside the address book, um, we've created this identity service with our scopes, uh, our client ID secret, um, and our endpoints. I can go ahead and do a test login and log in with my Domino credentials. I can see that I'm authenticated and I get a bear token, which shows that I've got secure access directly to, uh, to Domino. Look at the object that I built. So the object that we had pulled in there, um, we can see that we have our data model here. Uh, with the inner form in the view book. Um, if I come here and, uh, and look at the get method or function, I can uh, run a test. I'll send that query across. Immediately I get my Domino data back um, to see that I have those particular values returned. So um, not only can I view that data, but I can create that data. So if I come in here to a form and we see that the, uh, the data model here that we have in the mapping set up, uh, we can run a test there. So I'll go ahead and, and just pop in here um, in this JSON payload. A request for an address. <clears throat> and I'll put a name in here uh, and we'll engage that participant. And a simple phone number um, to that. So we have this data that we're going to post across to Domino. And uh, once we go ahead and we submit that and send it, we see that we have a positive response. That information was added there. If we come back to our, our view, we can again run that same test. And when we send that across, we do see that we went out to Domino and we got one, two, three, four, and now five documents. And we see that uh, this was added here. Uh, for the information that we put in place there. Looking over in uh, in notes, we can refresh that view and see that that was added into our, our notes application in Domino as well. So now how do we integrate that with a web application? So really quickly, let's build one. <clears throat> um, we'll do that with Voltimex Go Iris. Again, this is a, a great IDE that allows for us to communicate with Foundry um, pretty easily with drag and drops. Um, I'll show you how we can basically automatically generate some of these things. Use the terminology of form. A form in Iris is an individual screen in Iris, so a little different than in Notes, um, but, but very similar on the same the same mentality as well. Um, so we're going to go ahead and create a uh, identity service, and then we're going to display the data uh, that we pull down. So quickly and easily here, um, we can go ahead and link to our existing applications on Foundry. So we'll associate with our address book application. We can look at the services that we've defined there. And so the uh, identity service, we want to do a login. So quickly and easily, we just drag and drop this onto the form. 
this dynamically builds uh, a button for us that actually communicates directly back with Foundry and, and does all of the things that we needed to do for that identity service. We can create a new form as well to show the data. So just like we had that get method uh, back there in Foundry, we can drag and drop that onto a form and it dynamically builds a, uh, a, a UI for us with response. Now this pulls back all the data that comes back from that particular request. So really quickly and easily, we can customize this to the things that we want to see. So we don't necessarily need the form, uh, the, the, the index, the UNID, the e-tag, the notes ID. I just want to display the name, address, and phone number. I can rearrange the order of this. So I have name, number, and address there. And just click regenerate. And now I have a form of the information that I want to see here. So once we log in, again, again, all these forms are independent screen and application. So I want to make sure that when I do the action of actually clicking the, the login button, I do invoke the service for address book login. But after I get the re successful response, I want to navigate to the form that I just created, Form 2, uh, which shows the data. So quickly and easily inside of the IRIS IDE, I can do a test uh, preview here to look at what the application looks like. Um, got an icon that's not showing up, but I like to look at in an actual browser. So uh, in the console, you can click on the, the link that's local to your machine. We can log in here again with our Domino credentials. <clears throat> And, uh, and authenticate with Domino. We see we successfully logged in and we have our data pulled across. So real quickly and easily, we just built an application that reaches out to Domino and fetches data. Well, we can also create data. So we're gonna update the application that I've got there um, by, by adding data to, to Domino as well. And uh, so we're gonna generate a new form um, inside of here. I renamed some of these to make them easier. Um, we're going to call this one add data. Real quickly and easily, we're going to drag a couple of labels over here so we can see what it is that we're going to add. Again, this is the real benefit of the low code capabilities that we have. Um, I'm not writing any pro code here. I am literally just dragging um, text boxes and labels over to the form uh, to build my application. So any citizen developer can, can really build applications. So if I want to go in here and change what these labels are, it's quickly and easily. I can come in here to the look of that and I can call this one name. Uh, the next label here I will call number. Uh, the third one address. So I'm going to add uh, my number and address there. I want to give these things names that, that make sense. So the text box for name, I'll just call this text name. Uh, I want to call the next one text number. And I'll show you why this is important to have understandable names uh, for your generated um, components here in just a moment when we do our mappings. But uh, here is text address. And so, um, look at uh, this button I can set these things up I can make sure that I can uh, ship these things around the way I want them to have looking and feel uh, but when I go into the button I need to add an action for this button so what I want to do in the button when I click on it is do something so I want to call a foundry service so again real quickly and easily dragging and dropping these widgets in place allows for you to do this so I can select a service um, that I want to, uh, to to invoke here. I want to call my enter form. I want to call the method within that to create a uh, entry here. And then I need to open up a mapping editor to really map what we had in our form that we just created here um, with what's happening on the server. So again, when we created those particular entries, we named them things like text name, text number, and text address. This is why it's convenient to have those uh, particular things with recognizable names. 
So I want to map my text name to a name field, my text number to a number field. Now the number is a number and I have it as a string. So we allow for you to see that there may be a mismatch in types. Um, it should be fine as long as we have a string that is a number. Um, so I went ahead and just went through that. And now I've built my application and connected that with the back end um, of, of the Foundry side. Now, again, these are individual forms that we've built. So from our view data, I want to be able to add a button here so that I can go ahead and, and add data um, in that new uh, form that I just created there to, to add that data. Um, really quickly and easily, I can change the name of that button. And I can even modify the look and feel of it a little bit. So there's the color that I have there. Um, if I want to increase the border size, I can make it a little bit more pronounced. Um, and now we see that that button's there. Now, once that button's been added, all I want to do is when I click on that button, go from this form over to the other form that I created to add data. So I'll just tell it to move to a, a different form called add data and go ahead and save that. Now, once I add that data, I want to come back here and take a look and see that I've uh, properly added it. So um, once that comes back as a successful callback of adding the data, I want to come back here and look and see what I've done there to view that data. And now we've just added the ability to uh, create data inside of our application. So um, I had a break point in there. Um, we can go ahead and, uh, and build this application again with a, with a live preview and see what this looks like. So again, pulling this up in a browser, I can go ahead and log in here with my uh, Domino credentials. So with that secure access to Domino through the, the REST API, I successfully log in. I have all of my data here. I can add an address. So I'll just add uh, my name here, a very simple fictitious phone number, <laughs> and again, the same thing with an address. Now, once I click the, the, the button here to add that, it will actually take that data, go through Foundry, and actually add that into Domino. So now I have just added that uh, there as well. <clears throat> so real quick and easily, we just built an application that's working with Domino and, uh, and being able to see that information um, on our web app. So what if I already have an existing application? I know I just built a new one quickly and easily in Iris, but what if I have something that I've already built? Um, can we do that? Well, yes, yes, we can. So what Foundry and Voltimex provide for you is the ability to, to reference the APIs and the ability to talk to some of those things <clears throat> and the backend server without necessarily having to go through the IRIS IDE, but, but using the actual APIs to, to integrate your applications uh, with Foundry. So <clears throat> I'm gonna show that to you here in just a moment. So uh, again, the Foundry uh, HCL Domino Adapter is the key. This is our conduit that we use uh, to securely have all of our, our data integrity um, from Domino to, uh, to, to, to the end user application. Um, you are able to do things directly with, with REST APIs, uh, but we definitely want to try to use whenever uh, dealing with da Domino data with, with the object services and the HCL Domino Adapter. Again, network connectivity things um, that, that may be issues, uh, so for stuff like offline objects, really powerful to use that. Along with that, inside of the object services, you can interpolate with any other object services that you've defined. So if you have other backends, um, web services, uh, SAP, uh, relational databases, you can do all that stuff um, within Foundry to integrate things together to make a much more powerful application than with Domino alone. And we provide sample code to help you do this um, <clears throat> within uh, both Foundry as well as our documentation. So inside of Foundry, <clears throat> if you go to the API management, we've got a few different SDKs here um, that we can use. I'm going to go ahead and uh, and use the, the, the JavaScript SDK to kind of build something uh, for you here, um, uh, kind of live on this demo. 
So all that stuff can be found again in our documentation as well as in sample code that we provide inside of the Foundry APIs or the Foundry server itself. There's the ability to find and, and grab this sample code and be able to build an application. So just to show you how cool this is, I'm gonna build something outside of Iris using nothing more than those um, particular uh, APIs that we're looking at. So again, here is our address book. If I run a test here, I can see that we come back with one, two, three, four different records. Um, and I wanna go ahead and display that in something uh, that, that I've already got in my, my current applications. I'm writing this in Notepad++, one of the most basic of all editors. And so how do I do that? Well, in the documentation, as I said, we've got some references, some sample code here. Um, so coming down to grab some sample code here just to initialize uh, my application, I can copy this code and pop that right here into my file. Um, the application key, app secret, and service URL are found inside of the Foundry console. Uh, so when we publish the application, we have the key, the secret, and the service URL to access the application that we've got running in Foundry. So <clears throat> to look at what I've got written here, I want to make sure that I uh, initialize that. So I call the init method. Once I do do that, I will log to the console that we successfully initialized it and then pop up an alert, uh, in a, a, an alert that we successfully uh, did initialize the application. Then I wanna go ahead and I wanna log in. So I wanna log in with, uh, with the user services that I've got. Where did I get this code? Um, so I wanna go back and look again, make sure that I'm gonna log into the uh, proper identity service that I've defined in my application. So if I look here in the address book, I can see that my identity service uh, that I've created, that identity provider is called address book. <clears throat> so when we go back, I see that the provider name uh, I want there is address book. And uh, I'll pop back over here to the Foundry console and look at that identity service. Over here on the right-hand side, I see these three dots sample code is there. So I've got a, a number of different um, channels. I want to use the JavaScript and I grab this code here. So it's already pretty much provided for me. I can come over and populate that in my application as I've done here. Once I do a successful login, pop up another alert that says login success. <clears throat> and then I want to get the data um, similar to what I did in the test there uh, to show that we're pulling that data back in there. So the service name that we're gonna log into in the object service is found again um, over here in the sample code. So I can go ahead and grab that sample code and initialize the object service. And then from within that object service, I wanna come back over here um, to my, my view and I wanna use the get method and uh, get the sample code from that as well and I can populate that sample code in my application uh, back over here in Notepad <clears throat> and uh, be able to run that application. So we can see here that um, with, with some of the uh, OData queries, I could specify some of the information that I get, um, uh, filter down some data, uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and just grab all of it um, just for the what we're looking at here today. Once I get the data that comes back, I'm going to log that to the console, and then I'm going to kind of prettify, prettyify that in the body here down in the JSON response. So we'll see that down here below uh, where I, I kind of put that response back in after I do the login. So when we look at this application, I'll go ahead and refresh it, and I see that I actually did get an init success. We do that down in the console. When I log in here, I'm calling my uh, OAuth2 identity service provider. I come over here, I log in successfully, and the information is printed out there in that application. All of this, again, was written outside of Iris. We did it using just the APIs that are, are powerful and exposed and allowing for you to do that with your applications um, <clears throat> outside of Iris, but still using the power of of Foundry to build those things.
So a couple of things real quick uh, before we jump into questions. Um, you are able to, to go and try this um, on what was something we call SOFI. You can build an environment, log in there, and it pops one up in six to seven minutes. Um, a really quick and easy way to kind of um, get your feet wet there and, and jump in both uh, with both feet and, and, and try the uh, HCL uh, Voltimex Foundry server. Again, uh, VoltScript early access, another QR code there, same one. Go ahead and grab that early access for VoltScript and play around with that a bit. Um, as I noted earlier, there's a number of webinars that have been around. So this is a QR code for the webinar series and look at some of the things that we've printed out before, um, as well as some of the things that we'll post out in the future. Uh, HCL Software U is a great utility to go ahead and, uh, and learn some of the uh, capabilities that we have. There's fantastic labs and, uh, and services that we provide there from our, our university um, for you to take advantage of. Again, also uh, for business partners, we have uh, enablement, uh, enablement webinars there as well. And with that, um, I think we'll jump over for any questions um, that uh, may have popped up while I was talking. Adam, did you get anything? Matt? Uh, I don't see. Yeah, we, we've got several questions that have come in. Some are more technical. So why don't we start with those? And then if there's, I, I can answer some of the other ones. Uh, we had a question about code management. So how does code management, i.e. Git, Bitbucket, and code quality insurance, i.e. SonarCube, work with VoltMX and MXGo? Is there a way to integrate such tools with VoltMXGo? Uh, so there are a number of different providers that we have um, that are that are uh, available to be used uh, via foundries uh, aspects of, of Voltimex. Um, there is a, a large number of them. I'm trying to remember if Sonar keeps in there. Um, I know that there's a number of analytics that we provide uh, out of the box, uh, but you're able to inter integrate any of those other things. You should be able to um, with uh, um, the Iris. extensions we have in, in Foundry and in the capabilities of Voltimex. Yeah, this is Go ahead. Um, Iris apps uh, can be pushed up to Git. Um, not sure if it can be pushed up to Bitbucket um, as well, but it's certainly got um, GitHub int integration. Um, for VoltScript's stuff in Foundry, um, that can be coded in VS Code, um, at, as, as you saw there, and it, it can also be coded in Foundry itself. Uh, if you want source control, then that would be coded through VS Code. Um, code quality, there is no, um, no, no, SonarCube doesn't understand LotusScript or VoltScript, so there's nothing that we can do there at this point. Okay. But also, co um, code quality, you're really looking at that being a pro code tool, whereas Foundry, uh, sorry, not Foundry, um, VoltMX Go is more aimed at low code or no code. Well, thank you, Matt and Paul. Uh, the next question is, will there be extensions for developers who use WebStorm as an IDE? So I looked at this um, whilst the webinar was going along. Um, there's been a request on JetBrains website um, for support for VS Code extensions in WebStorm, and they say that they are not doing that. Um, obviously, with this team that we've got, we don't have uh, the breadth of people to write completely different uh, extensions for multiple different IDEs. Um, so VS Code is the one that we've gone with there. Okay, thank you for that response. Next question. Can you use third-party two-factor authentication cloud services like Okta with Volt Foundry? And I think um, you not should sure if either of you are, you... or if that is your area of expertise, but I believe the answer is yes. So, uh, 
so we can use a number of different IDPs. Um, again, as I said before, anything that really implements OAuth uh, should be able to be used. Um, <clears throat> there's a number of different third-party uh, IDPs and things that we've used uh, and integrated within there that I've, I've played around with. Um, as far as two-factor authentication, that probably would make sense as well, because um, that would kind of be handled by Okta and the other uh, services, and then it would just return, uh, as long as it returns a bear token to, to show that you have valid authentication at that, that should work fine. I've not played with one, but I don't see a problem there. Great, thank you. Um, next, we've got two questions that are somewhat related about um, creating applications in IRS. Can you create responsive UIs with defined columns and rows? And can the style of an app be changed with a style sheet? Yes. So, so the applications are basically so so they're they're responsive and and, and adaptive. Uh, so, depending on on what the particular device is or the, the, the UI that you're looking at, um, they would be responsive to uh, screen real estate as well as uh, adaptive to the different types of devices and things that you're looking at. Um, as far as uh, CSS and manipulations of how they look, um, we have something in an iris called themes. Um, so you can actually create and build your own theme. So all of the applications that you bring across, you can almost instantly pop a theme on there that's respective of your company and have the same look and feel on all your applications um, almost immediately. Um, so that is uh, one of the really cool things about I the Iris ID. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I, th I think it did. I think the answer to both of them is, is kind of a yes, right? Um, Next, we have two questions that are kind of related more to the value proposition of this. One asks about, you know, that there's a, a lot of things that need to be installed in order to get this. Right? You do need to install the Volt MX Foundry and Iris applications in, in order to do this. Um, and the answer to that is, is yes, that is part of with Volt MX Go. You do need to have Foundry installed. It is it is something that. Um, HCL or other partners could host if you want someone to host uh, Volta Mexico in the cloud for you. That is something that can be arranged. Iris is the IDE that's installed locally um, to, to do the coding in. Um, but we see this as, you know, we, we have a lot of Volta Mex customers out there already. We have a number of Volta Mex Go customers. If this is something that will meet your needs, if Domino, if Restyle, if Nomad, isn't meeting your needs today, or you see additional opportunities through this, then, then yes, that is something that, you know, in order to get the benefits of it, you do need to install the product or, or have it hosted for you. Um, if you do want to test it out, and Matt, maybe you can bring back up the QR code page again. We do have Volt MX Go available for testing purposes on the HCL SOFI platform. Um, it will be set up in, in about 10 minutes. It has full Volt MX, Foundry, uh, Iris is accessible for you to download. It has a full Domino server available to you to use. So if this is something you just wanna try out and, and see how it works and get some experience with it, I'd highly recommend that. Um, you can create Domino applications or, or add your own Domino application onto the hosted Domino server and then use that to connect in and try out importing your applications um, or even just connecting back to Domino um into building integrations through foundry so th those are all things you can do like i said up and running in about 10 minutes to try it out before you go and install it to see uh to see if it will work um and then the other question some, somewhat related to that was around the value proposition of using foundry to access and change domino data um and here i'll, I'll give you an answer but i'll let matt paul feel free to jump in afterwards as well this is really, you know, we have customers doing this already today where they want to be able to integrate in other enterprise systems or third party systems into their Domino applications. So we've got one that is using the, the REST API to integrate in um, tracking data for package services. So you're using a shipping carrier and you want to be able to integrate in the app, the, the tracking status directly into your Domino database as an additional field. Uh, along with your shipping or inventory system, they can do that. 
We've got another one, another company that relies on Domino for very secure operations internally. Up to now, if you had want an external party to add or make changes or to, you know, to their Domino records, they basically had to call into someone in the company and they would do it on their behalf. And they're using Foundry to build an external application that can connect into Domino, but using that Foundry layer as a protective, uh, you know, protective barrier, a protective layer between the two so that they feel more comfortable exposing, you know, giving access to the data that lives in Domino to update or read it um, without having to open up the, the entire Domino infrastructure to those outside of the organization. Um, so those are just two examples, but it makes it very easy because there are hundreds of connectors and adapters built for Foundry already. You can have one connection from Domino into Foundry using the Domino adapter that, that is available, and then using the existing adapters back to SAP, the CRM system, whatever else is out there, shipping systems, Amazon, whatever you might want, um, and have it be that orchestration for you rather than needing to build APIs or take advantage of other APIs inside of um, inside of Domino every time back to those backend systems. I don't know, Matt or, or Paul, if you have anything else to add on, on that aspect of things. Well, Adam, real quick, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to say clarify an answer, not to contradict you, um, but when, when the question was asked about the numbers of software that used to be installed, Foundry and Iris and things, you don't need Iris. I would definitely recommend Iris, um, as you saw how quickly and easy it was for me to build an application, but I also built an application in Notepad. Um, you do need Foundry. Um, Iris would definitely be something that I would recommend wholeheartedly to to get your to get yourself going. And and another um, use case, just throwing in from what Adam was saying, um, I know that Bernd Gewehr, um from Vossing demoed at Engage and had a whole, whole session at Engage, where they're using Foundry to talk to uh, third-party APIs, which means that they have limited people who have access to edit the Foundry UI. So those um, APIs and secrets are restricted to a very small number of people. The Lotus Script developers then call those APIs and um, it means that they don't have to give all of their developers um, the API key and secrets and have them visible to anyone who's got Domino designer and designer access to a database. Uh, they can pin down um, access to those third party APIs, um, those third party API key and secrets uh, that are uh, used company wide. Uh, that's another great use case, absolutely. Um, I think we've got time for one or two more quick questions here. Does the Volt MX Go server run on the same physical server that hosts Foundry? Volt MX Go is actually not a server. It is add-ons to the Volt MX Foundry or Iris uh, uh, programs. So it actually is not a separate server dedicated just for the Go capability as much as it is plugins or add-ons to Foundry. Um, so it is not, you need the Foundry server, the MX Go version of the Foundry server, but it's not in addition to it. Uh, we had a question about whether the webinar is recorded. Yes, it is, and then it will be available later. Um, and last question, what type of license would you need to use Foundry? The Volt MX Go license entitles you, your users, to use Foundry. So you don't need a development license for it. Developers can access it. But anyone who is using or accessing an application built through Volt MX or Volt MX Go would need a license to Volt MX Go. Um, but that includes a user license that includes access to anything built on it. So with that, I think we're, I know we're over, we're, we're past our hour here. Thank you all very much for coming. Thank you to Matt for that great presentation and Paul for your help on the answers here. Um, you can certainly reach out to us um, with additional questions uh, if, if there are any we didn't answer here. And thank you all very much for the time.